We're only a few weeks into 2021 and already the relationship between the telcos and the public cloud is a major talking point in the industry. So I'm chatting today with Danielle Royston. She is the founder and CEO at Telco DR about this very important topic. So uh, Danielle, what have you been up to lately? I understand you've been advising telcos on how they can save money by using the public cloud. Yeah, it's been super exciting. I uh, soft launched my consulting arm of my business a few months ago, and we've been having about five to 10 conversations a week with telco execs all over the world. And what I'm seeing is people falling into three buckets when it comes to the public cloud. And so I'll call the first group the I'm just browsing group. Um, they're not sure yet. They're still kicking the tires. Um, and I see this mostly in Latin America, where I really have to work to get them over some of the basic objections to the public cloud. And so for them, it's mostly about education and really uh, evangelizing the benefits of the public cloud. Um, then there's a middle group. And I see this group growing very rapidly, which is the I need help group. And these people have started but need some support. Um, maybe they need help building the business case or they've started to move and maybe the use of the public cloud is more expensive than they anticipated. And so, for example, I talked to a telco in the Middle East in this camp. And so for these guys, we optimize their current spend for them and we usually see 50% savings on a quick scan of their AWS environment and help them tune and get those savings. And so the third group, and this group is also growing pretty rapidly, is a group that's in deep with the public cloud. And I call this group the never give up, never surrender guys who are struggling with really the last 20 to 30% of applications. Um, these typically are super old legacy applications, maybe proprietary applications that they are you know, really struggling with. Um, usually, you know, you need maybe more advanced cloud skills or maybe more advanced software skills and they don't exist in the organization. And so, you know, these guys want to move the entire IT estate. And so we come in and we literally refactor those applications. And so it's been a really great way to get engaged with telcos that maybe have great tech talent that maybe not that deep expertise and really help them to get more of their estate across the line. And so really excited to help this group out. Um, actually, all the groups um, really start to figure out and play with the public cloud, experiment with the public cloud, optimize their savings, and then go as far as refactoring applications. So it's awesome. So that's some really major savings you're talking about there uh, for some of these operators. So how exactly can they make such big savings on their public cloud spend? Yeah, you know, I'm doing it because I'm surrounded by great technologists and cloud economists, which is a new skill that I think telcos need to really build. And so I'll give you a really good example, very tangible example, which is, um, you know, AWS has made a lot of changes over the years um, in terms of the way that they roll out new services and new features. And so here's an example that was announced at the reInvent conference uh, just held in, uh, in December of, of last year. And so general purpose storage, GP for short, is usually the second biggest cost behind compute at AWS. And at reInvent, they introduced GP3, the successor to GP2. One of the great things about GP3 is that it's 20% cheaper. In the old days of AWS, they would just have made GP2 cheaper and everyone would, would have gotten the discount. But now they either can't or they don't do that approach anymore. So now what they do is they introduce a new version, GP3, and the issue is that you have to do the work to migrate. So it's super easy to do the work. You just have to get it done. And so some people are a little bit hesitant to do it just automatically. They want to understand the differences between you know, GP2 and GP3 in terms of the impact to their workloads. Um, sometimes people just miss the announcement. Um, announcements are coming, are coming out of AWS all the time. And so maybe your team was too busy and they just missed just missed the update. And so that happens all the times. And now just like multiply that across 
more than 100 services. Um, the same thing happened with the new EC2 instance types that have three times faster networking. So again, the old days, they would have just rolled it out to everyone and everyone would have gotten the faster networking. But now you really have to do the work and figure out if it's right for you, right for your application, and then get your workload moved over. And so there's a lot of complexity there. Um, there's just more and more complexity as AWS has gotten bigger and stronger. And it's really hard for like a single person right, to, to keep up with it. It just keeps moving and changing so quickly. And so this is a perfect job for automation. So if you're super educated, use automation, know what you're doing, the public cloud just keeps getting cheaper and cheaper and better and better. But if you don't know what you're doing and you're moving from on-premise to AWS and you just expect it to get cheaper on its own, it won't and it'll probably be more expensive. And so there's this really great guy to follow on Twitter named Corey Quinn. He goes by Quinny Pig, that's his handle. He's probably one of the most famous cloud economists, but he basically, his message is, show me any AWS bill and I can reduce it by 20%. Um, and so he has a whole team that just keeps up with all the announcements and figures out you know, the trade-offs between technology and cost. Um, and so that's what I'm doing. I've built some automation tools. And so within literally a matter of days, we can scan any cloud environment, identify big savings, uh, tell you how to do it, tell you how much it'll cost to move, and then how much you'll save. And so I think that's really impressed the telcos I'm working with, and they really sort of like that, uh, that experience with me and my team. So lots of really key economic developments there. Uh, and as we've said, there's lots going on in the whole telco and, and public cloud arena at the moment. Uh, and one of the major talking points in the early weeks of this year has been the strategic relationship between Nokia and Google Cloud, uh, that, which is focused on delivering public cloud platforms at the edge. Uh, Danielle, what is your take on that relationship? Do you think it's a, a really important one for the industry? Well, I think it's a, I, I do think it's a big deal for the industry. And I think it's a really big deal for these two players. I mean, in both cases, they're pretty much in, you know, sort of the, the back seat in their respective areas. You know, Google is, is third at this point in telco relative to AWS and Azure. Uh, Nokia is in a, you know, sort of behind position relative to Huawei and Ericsson. And so this is a great marriage of both to disrupt the industry and try to leapfrog and, and get ahead. Um, I think it's really great for the telcos because now you have a network equipment manufacturer, you know, pre-packaging and really sort of figuring out uh, the difficulties with putting together, you know, a, you know, hyper-local mini data center uh, next to the tower to really maximize, you know, uh, all the edge applications and revenue potential that everyone keeps dreaming of. So I think it's really great. Um, the one issue that I see with it, and, and this is more of a Google thing, is Google solution doesn't provide a managed stack, like the actual hardware. And so that's something that the telcos will still have to figure out for themselves. And I contrast that with um, the AWS uh, Outpost and Wavelength solution, where it is, I mean, they literally deliver a little mini uh, AWS stack. They manage the stack and you get access to all the servers. And so, you know, different approaches, you know, everyone has slightly different strategies with how they want to solve it. Seems like Google doesn't want to really get into the hardware, you know, management um, a business, whereas uh, AWS is a little bit willing to do that. Um, and so uh, we'll see how it works out. But I think it's really exciting that people are really starting to see that public cloud can provide services at the edge uh, better than a telco can do on their own. And hopefully we can start to see these uh, edge applications really take off. Now, these are the kind of industry developments that, that normally we'd be planning uh, to talk about over a glass of wine at Mobile World Congress, and we'd be preparing to head for, for Barcelona in late February, or early March. But of course, we know that that, that show has been pushed back to, to June this year for obvious reasons. Uh, so, but what are your thoughts about that event? And, and are you planning on, on being at MWC in Barcelona in June in person? I am totally going to MWC. Um, everyone's talking about this. Um, everyone's wondering what everyone else is doing, but I'm gonna be my usual bold self and say I'm totally in. 
Um, the other day I saw Keith Dyer put up a poll on LinkedIn about MWC. Um, he's from the mobile network and his poll got 48 votes. So don't know how, you know, st statistically relevant it is, but, um, in his poll, the results were 54% said they don't know yet. And 31% said they plan on a reduced presence. So like 85% are still on the, like, I don't know if I'm going, but you know, who knows who's there, if they're going this girl. Right. I have been doing Zoom calls with execs, but I love MWC. I love networking. I love relationships. I mean, it's totally my jam. So I'm ramping up and spending, assuming it will happen. Um, and I'm planning on blitzing public cloud. I don't think that's a shocker to anyone. Um, three years ago, when I started talking about the public cloud, I felt like I was the only one at MWC. Everyone was talking about 5G and I was talking about public cloud. And I think people were like, that girl is crazy. Um, but this year, you know, I'm, I'm hoping everyone's gonna go. I think everyone's gonna be talking about the public cloud. And I think telcos are gonna realize how far behind they are. Um, all the surveys that have done in 2020, you know, the CIO and the CTO uh, surveys um, feel that the movement to the public cloud has been accelerated because of COVID. Um, Verizon CEO Hans Vesberg was just uh, talking at his CES keynote um, in mid-January. That's that Las Vegas show that was held virtually. Um, and he believes COVID accelerated the digital revolution by five to seven years. Um, and so, you know, I think people have just gone through uh, a big learning lesson of how do I, how do I uh, reconcile our security protocols that say two people need to be together all times in the data center, but then COVID said you can only have one person at a time. And I think people are just sort of like, you know, getting ready to throw their hands up and say, why don't I just have, you know, AWS or, or Google handle this for me? So I really think we're at a tipping point for public cloud, and I'm going to take advantage of that, of that at MWC. Uh, GSMA, of course, says it's going to happen. So, uh, so let's go do it. Um, I'm super done with the lockdown. I think everyone is. I want to be super safe, but I'm ready to go big. Um, after a year of not flying, I'm ready to get, get on an airplane, go meet people, uh, really crossing my fingers that everyone will be vaccinated by June. And I think we're entering a time of the roaring 20s. Um, I think the governments are going to get their, their stuff together. And so to, my message to everyone is get on a list, go get vaccinated, and, uh, and let's go see each other at MWC. Okay, excellent. Well, I admire your optimism. Um, so do you, do you have anything specific planned for the show? Yeah. So like I mentioned, I'm going really big. I'm planning on having a huge booth at MWC. Um, I'm planning to host, uh, have like a little pavilion, if you will, of other like-minded software telco startups that are focused on the public cloud, right? Really make it sort of like the cool kids that are really doing public cloud right. And so a shout out to uh, those cool kids. If you have a startup and don't have a booth, I'm happy to host you. Um, and a little bit of a spoiler alert, I'm super excited to throw a really big party at MWC. We're working on booking the venue and the talents, but I'm thinking really big. And I think everyone's going to be psyched to be finally together, psyched to go to a show, psyched about the public cloud. And so I'm all in and going big. And so go get your vaccine. Follow me on Twitter. My handle is TelcoDR um, or on LinkedIn. And stay tuned for more information. I think it's really going to be epic and great. And I hope, Ray, you're there and we can, you know, I always have great coffee in my booth. I hope we can have a great cup of coffee together. Can't wait. Well, there you go. You, you, you've got me one foot on the plane now with that offer. Um, so, well, <laughs> I, like I said, I, I, I admire your optimism. I hope your plans come to fruition. Uh, and as ever, Danielle, uh, a pleasure talking to you today. Thanks very much. It's always great to talk to you. Thank you so much.